Am I the jerk for telling my grandma not to come into my house without permission? I moved into my first apartment by myself one and one half years ago, mainly due to privacy issues with my parents. My fiancé moved in with me this past October. When I lived at my parents' house, it was common for my grandparents, my mom's dad and stepmom, to come in and out of the house as they pleased, since they lived next door, and often did their laundry at our place. In my new place, I value my privacy, so I keep it locked up and do not invite people over when I am not home. I make it clear to call me before coming over. A couple of weeks ago, my fiancé and I shared a birthday. That Wednesday we had plans all day and were gone from our house the entire day. When we got back home, a card was on the table addressed to me. I asked my fiancé if he had put it there or knew where it came from. When he said he didn't, I quickly realized that my grandmother had brought it over and placed it in our home while we were out. I waited until my anger subsided and messaged her to ask how the card ended up on our kitchen table. She mentioned that the door was not shut tight, so she walked in, said hi to all the cats, left the card, and then left. I distinctly remember locking the door before we left for the day, and our door does not open if it is locked. I had checked the ring camera footage, and knew that what she said was not entirely true. I told her she has to ask before coming into our house, and that we would like our privacy respected. She said she did not mean to offend us, but I am unsure. It is likely that she saw me use my spare key, so I think that is how she got in. She never asked to visit or come in, and she never called to inform me that she had been there. She has consistently crossed what should be general boundaries throughout my life, and I am tired of people excusing her behavior. So Reddit, am I the antagonist? Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk. Just change the locks. If she already has a copy, it's best to get an electronic lock and forget to give her the combination. Don't leave a spare key hidden around your home either. Someone you want even less in your home might find it. It's better to use a key safe or leave the spare with a reliable friend. Am I the jerk for threatening to kick out my niece after she hacked my daughter's Roblox account? My 38-year-old daughter has been playing this game called Roblox since lockdown first started as a way of playing with her friends virtually as well as curing her boredom. She was obsessed with this Roblox game that's set in a school because she missed her friends so much, and it allowed her to stay connected with them. Her interest in video games has developed into an interest in technology. She's by far at the top of her at class, and has even started learning how to code in order to make her own game. My sister and niece have recently had to move in with us. My niece and daughter usually get along, and they both bond over their interest in Roblox. Last week my daughter was completely distraught and crying nonstop. She said that she saw her cousin playing on a Roblox game, and realized her cousin's avatar had a lot more items than usual. She decided to join her, only to realize that her account had been hacked, and she'd lost nearly every item she had on her favorite Roblox game. She'd lost 800k of the in-game currency and nearly her entire inventory, which she claimed was worth over 5 million of the in-game currency. She had spent the last four years saving up for those items, and everything was gone just like that. My daughter began accusing my niece of hacking her account. My niece denied it at first but quickly broke under pressure and admitted everything. The previous day, they had been playing the game together when I called them down to dinner. My niece has only been playing for a few months, and I suppose she would be considered a newbie. She begged my daughter to give her some of her items, and my daughter refused, saying that she should earn the items by herself. When my daughter came down, my niece decided to stay behind for a minute to transfer all of my daughter's items into her account. I tried to mediate the situation, but my sister is refusing to cooperate. She told me that it's only a game, it's not like my daughter spent real money on it. I attempted to explain just how much this game means to my daughter, to which my sister said that my daughter should count herself lucky that her biggest problem is a bunch of pixels on a screen. She said my daughter was a teenager now and was too old to be acting this immature over a game. My niece refuses to give my niece her stuff back and says it's unfair that my daughter gets to have everything she wants both in real life and online. I told my sister and niece that both of them were acting like ungrateful brats considering how I was letting them stay in my home rent free. Today I gave her an ultimatum. If my niece doesn't return everything she hacked for my daughter, they would both have one week to leave. I told her that I refuse to let anyone disrespect my daughter under my roof. Am I the jerk? In my opinion, you have done nothing wrong here. It's so frustrating when people dismiss what others love just because they think they're too old for it. Theft is theft, and your niece stealing from your daughter is a serious issue that your sister needs to address. If your sister can't respect the time and effort your daughter has put into her collection, then she shouldn't be allowed to stay. Let people enjoy what they love and teach respect for others' belongings. Am I the jerk for yelling at my mother-in-law and ruining my wife's birthday? My wife and I have a four-year-old son. My son has beautiful long hair, so he often gets mistaken for a girl, but he loves his hair and so do we. To celebrate my wife's birthday, we flew to Melbourne from Sydney and booked a three-bedroom Airbnb as my in-laws were going to join us. Due to some complications with their travel, my in-laws could not travel on the intended date, and so my wife, son, and I went on ahead. My in-laws arrived a day later and I picked them up from the airport. One of the comments from my mother-in-law was that my son's fringe is too long and covers his eyes, so it needs to be cut. 
Both my wife and I said that we loved the way he looks, but we were considering a proper haircut soon. We were all excited as the next day was my wife's birthday, and we had booked a guided tour of the city with a photographer. It all went as planned, and we returned home around 3 p.m. Around 4 p.m., my wife wanted to visit a beach about 10 minutes from the Airbnb. As it was my wife's birthday and I didn't want to let her down, I downed half a glass of wine and went with her. Our son stayed back with his grandparents as it would be his sleeping time soon. My wife and I had some much needed alone time, and things seemed great. We picked up some snacks and pastries on the way home. But little did I know how things were going to turn out when we returned to the Airbnb. Everything was fine till about 5 minutes when I noticed that half of my son's bangs were gone. This was something I kept warning my mother-in-law the whole day not to do, and the moment we were away for an hour, she did it. I went off, I don't know if it was the wine or the exhaustion, but I couldn't hold my emotions back. I yelled that it was a massive breach of trust, literally within 24 hours of entering the country. My wife was pissed as well but she never holds her mom accountable, so I feel I had to as a line was crossed. Intentions aside, I know it's hair and it will grow back, but my trust was gone. My mother-in-law started crying and my wife helped calm the air. My wife was neutral and explained to me that I should have been more careful with my words, as per our culture we always show respect to our elderly. Later, I apologized to everyone for making a scene, and things looked good. The next morning however my wife blamed me for ruining her birthday, disrespecting her mother, and causing a scene. I don't know what I should do as I feel with all my heart that what my mother-in-law did was crossing a line, and if anything me reacting this way would make her think twice about going behind our backs again. So Reddit, I humbly ask you, am I the asshole, and if so, any advice to remedy the situation? Here is the corrected text. Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk. Your mother-in-law completely crossed the line by cutting your son's bangs without obtaining consent from you or your wife. Yes, Indian culture does promote the importance of respect for elders, but respect goes in both directions. The only person to be blamed for ruining the birthday is your mother-in-law, no one else. If this behavior isn't addressed now, it will only get worse as your child gets older. Am I the jerk for refusing to talk to ignoring my parent and telling them I will leave home forever as soon as I get to university? I will be taking one of the most important exams of my life in three weeks. I am feeling anxious but trying to stay calm. However, my mother is making this very difficult for me. This is the National University Admissions Test I will be taking. I am a science and mathematics student with good grades, but my mother isn't satisfied. Yesterday, I was accepted to a university in New Zealand through my own efforts. When I shared this news with my mom, she started screaming at me. She said things like, Do you really hate me that much that you applied to these places? You want to go far away? Love is always conditional. Once you turn 18, then bye sweetie, you are out. I recorded what she said just in case. This morning, one of my advisors from my cram school called my mom to inquire about how I am doing and informed her about the schedule changes there. There was a review class that I decided not to attend because I am familiar with the topics. I made this decision on my own and didn't inform her. She screamed at me again today for not informing her. Supposedly, I needed to inform her about this because I am not an adult yet. We had another argument. I told her that she always tries to play the victim and I am tired of her behavior. I then asked my dad for help. He said it's fine, I should just say okay and not pay attention to her. I didn't think it was fine. I also told him about how my mom threatened to throw me out, but he didn't believe me. I showed him the recording and he said, hey, she is just like that sometimes. I'm sure she didn't mean that, she loves you. For the rest of the day she kept coming into my room and telling me how far I am from where I should be now, which I know is very wrong. I always try my best no matter what, and that's why I've come this far in the first place. Finally, I stared at her, locked my room immediately and kept it locked. During dinner, my parents both expressed their disapproval of my current academic state, my mom aggressively and my dad passively. I told them I will never be grateful for this, how I wanted their support for once, and informed them that I will leave home immediately and never return after getting accepted to a university. My mother told me I am a horrible daughter and how other children are amazing. I looked at my dad for help, and he apologetically stared, then left. The pressure I am under with 21 days remaining is immense even for someone as resilient as me. I am unable to understand if this behavior is acceptable or not, and all of this has disrupted my study efforts today. I have assignments and lectures for tomorrow. I am still unsure if I did the right thing. Am I the asshole? Please tell me what you think. I need to hear someone's opinion. Thank you. You are not in the wrong here. Go to whatever school will help you fulfill your life dreams, goals, career, and desires. Seek out people who celebrate you for who you are and support you, even if it means leaving behind family members who don't. Good parents support their kids, while bad parents treat every interaction as transactional. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for birthday presents for my child that they can only use at my ex's place? I am a 52-year-old male recently separated from my ex, 49-year-old female, of 18 years. We share custody, one week on, one week off, with our two children, a 13-year-old daughter and soon-to-be 15-year-old son. The relationship ended mostly amicably. We just drifted apart and ended up in the friend zone. 
When we split, we agreed that I would stay in our old four-bedroom family home for a few more years, while our kids were still in high school. I would continue to pay down our mortgage and also pay for any additional renovations that we still have left to complete since buying the place four years ago. When the time comes to sell, she will get her 50%. She agreed to move out into her own three-bedroom rental. I am paying her child support as she only earns about one-third of what I do in her part-time job. The rest of her income comes from government social support. We have a joint bank account where we both put money into to cover the kids' general needs. This week is my son's 15th birthday. He's big into gaming, basketball, and fishing. When he moves between our two places, he brings his Xbox with him. I have paid for two computer monitors, one at each property, just so he can do this easily and be happy. He has a homemade basketball hoop mounted on the outside of my house for him to practice whenever he stays with me. My ex emailed me to ask what I think we should get him for his birthday. She listed two things, a freestanding basketball hoop and a gaming chair, totaling around $1,000, both to be used only at her place for his enjoyment there. I've refused to help her buy these particular options. I prefer if we spent our money on something that he'll enjoy benefiting from wherever he may be, like new clothes, a new device, a new bike, fishing gear or a shared family experience with both of us present. I thought that was reasonable. My ex-wife thinks I'm being a jerk with this stance for not agreeing to pay anything for these particular presents to help furnish her house or his bedroom there. She suggests that it's not fair that he can play basketball at my place and not hers, or that he feels more comfortable playing video games at my place and not hers. She's now accusing me of starting to play some kind of petty tit-for-tat game with her by not fairly contributing enough towards my son's happiness on his birthday. My fear is that I am indeed being unnecessarily picky with this battle, being too selfish, and denying her the right to be able to make her home as happy or as comfortable as mine for my son to live in. Am I the jerk? You are not in the wrong here. It's convenient that she wants you to pay for something he already has at your house to be installed at her home. The kids will remember which parent they had experiences with and which parent made their home a comforting place for them. Just shut down this group present idea, as it's clear it won't be anywhere near evenly split. Buy your son something you think he will truly enjoy. Am I the jerk for only inviting my family to my graduation and not my birth family? I, 18 years old male, was openly adopted at birth. That means I grew up having visits with my birth family, but I was raised by my parents and alongside my five siblings. Two of us had contact with our birth families while the others did not. My relationship with my birth family is difficult. My birth parents had a child less than a year after me, and they kept her. They also kept their son a year after her, and a few years later, they had two more kids. I went through a period where I was jealous and upset that I was given up, but the others weren't. Also, my birth parents would sometimes make me feel like I should be calling them mom and dad, which I never did. After a few years I stopped enjoying the visits with them, but everyone around us said it was beneficial to me, and maybe in some ways it was. Today, the relationship is stressful and nothing else, especially with my birth siblings. They are very jealous of my siblings. They want us to be closer than we are and closer than my siblings I was raised with. They also talk about our parents when they mean their parents, and when I correct them, they tell me our parents are my real parents and I always belong to them. It's worse with the two who are close in age to me because they expect a deep bond between the three of us and they expected me to move in with them a few times. I remember during one of my birth family's visits, my birth siblings saw me and two of my siblings goofing off as we were walking home, and my birth family pulled over and asked me if I wanted to ride with them. My siblings were right there and were ignored, and because I said no, the older two birth siblings called me out on it afterward, saying I never hang out with them like that, and why do I act like those guys are my real siblings and not them? I said it's because my siblings are my real siblings, and I've been raised with them my whole life, and I will always have a tighter bond with them. Cue the it's not fair complaints. With graduation this year, I made a decision. I spoke to my parents about it first. They were supportive, and I think a little sad that my ongoing relationship with my birth family was in such a bad state. Then I told my birth parents. Birth family was not invited and would not get tickets. I felt it was for the best. My birth family is very angry, and it's been weeks since I first brought it up. My birth parents are saying my parents went back on the open adoption, but that no longer means anything because I make the decisions now. But the whole thing is such a mess, and I keep getting texts and messages from them and my birth siblings about how terrible I'll be for not inviting them and how they should be there over my family. Am I the asshole? You are not in the wrong here. An open adoption means the birth family and the child get to know each other, but there's no obligation to maintain a bond if it's not there. Your birth family is acting as if you were just on loan to your family, and that's not fair to you. If having them in your life is more stressful, it might be beneficial to gradually reduce contact. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.